Hey, Brassfax here. Today we're going to be shooting out to, well, about 500 yards with the Primary Arms 3X Micro Prism. Going to be doing a review on it, obviously, but uh, figured I might as well bring you guys out for the ride when I shoot at long range and uh, make a video out of it. It's on top of my Militia Works Fixie. Uh, I stopped at 500 yards, I typically go out to 600 yards because while the website does claim the lowest graduation is 600 yards, I believe, uh, from what I've seen with a ballistic calculator, that is for only 55 grain out of a 20 inch barrel, so pushing uh, 3250 uh, potentially. I'm running something slower, so I ended up actually switching things around and going with a 500 yard bottom hold as you see here. It is what it is. right? Before I hand you off to Brass Facts in the field, I'm going to go over some of my thoughts on this guy in the initial phase of the review. I'm at about 490 rounds, uh, 200 or so have been in running guns, and then 200 or so have been in two days of long range shooting. The form factor is absolutely great, and I love it for a rifle setup like this, with a, which is more of a mountain gun setup, and I'll eventually do a video on what I mean by that. I have some older stuff, but it's not as nuanced. Uh, but because it's so small, the, the size of the window is really small, and it does take get, some getting used to. The field of view is really wide, but the actual viewport that you view the field of view or the image through is really small, and it's just, well, I mean, it's it's a trade-off, right? The optic is small, therefore the window has to be small. Small. Uh, the reticle is really great, actually. Um, it's a hair on the busy side, but... It reminds me like of a Trijicon Aurora, um, or basically just a Trijicon reticle with a horseshoe on the outside, and uh, windage marks. And the windage marks are really useful and a big aspect of what I dislike about the ACOGs. Because uh, if you're shooting ACOGs at range, they're great. As soon as the wind picks up, uh, it becomes an issue. You can do little tricks like using the horizontal stadia lines as standoffs, and you can kind of bracket on the left side or right side of the target. And that gets you to about five miles an hour, per, uh, five mile an hour winds. You can push like seven miles an hour by just kind of holding and you can be pretty consistent. But by the ten you, time you get to 10 and 15 mile an hour winds, uh, you're pretty hosed because you're holding in wide open space. And if you're shooting at uh, like 500 yards, that is, it's, it's just not good to hold in wide open space. It's not consistent. You're not going to be making great hits. So this guy has got wind holds for five and 10 miles an hour. And that's a really cool thing, right? It allows you to be a lot more consistent where you otherwise otherwise might not be. Maybe a slight suggestion. Beyond that, the glass is pretty decent. Um, if you're in a city and I'm, you know, going side by side with nicer optics or even the, the other optic I reviewed recently, the GLX, uh, which this is very comparable to in terms of glass quality, I feel like. Uh, it's in the it's in the category where it's not bad, right? You're at range, you're shooting targets, you don't really notice anything, right? Light transmission so far seems good. I haven't shot in like true dusk yet, so to be determined. Um, you really only notice a thing in cities when you're looking at straight 90 degree edges or just hard edges, and you can begin to see the, the failings of the glass. But in practical shooting, this has enough glass quality to such that when you look at a target at, you know, 300 to 500 yards, the glass quality isn't so bad that you're kind of struggling to see it, right? So it's a good middle of the pack um, glass quality and it's helped by being a 3x so the burden of glass quality isn't nearly as high as say the last scope i reviewed which was the the primary arms glx all right i'm gonna save the rest of my thoughts for uh the actual review and uh, we'll get this guy out before leaving though i also shot this guy out uh out there today and uh yeah, most of you guys know about this rifle. This has been on the channel for quite some time. I switched to a 5.56 loading, so I re-zeroed, um, did some shooting, found I didn't really like that zero, shifted my zero a little bit, to something a little more consistent with this BDC, and uh, I was much happier with that. So this was just me confirming my hits at range and where exactly on the target I was. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty nifty setup. Like I said, I'll save most of my thoughts for the review. I don't really want to get into any definitive statements until I have some more time on it. But anyway, let's see you guys out there.
you don't think I need the bag for the little gun? All right, so we're at 320 yards. I was shooting the other day, and uh, this is actually where this optic comes into its own because of the winding mark, windage marks, where you're shooting in about 10 to 15 miles an hour wind. And um, yeah, it ended up being pretty good. Today is maybe five miles an hour, dropping down to like two. So I'll probably won't be needing them today, but let's get to it. We're at 300 yards, so top of the chevron's 100, bottom of the chevron's 200, so we're at the top of the, um, the first mark, so to speak. These aren't labeled, but works well enough. We're probably just gonna be shooting off the mag uh, today. Let's go forward. So I'm just... All right, we're gonna shoot at a full-size target for three hits, so a IPSC, uh, actually it's a reduced IPSC target. And then we're gonna switch to a I believe it's a four inch swinger. We're gonna shoot at that to see how on we are. Cause I can't observe the actual impacts relative on the target. I can just see that it impacted the target. So I shoot at a smaller target to see how, where on that target I am, if that makes sense. All right, let's do it. Hit. Pulled it left. Not to bitch, but brand new mil spec trigger. Gonna be a mil spec trigger. But on me, that's on my fault. All right, three hits on the reduced dipstick. Let's go for the swinger now. We're gonna aim dead center. It might actually be a miss because I believe we are, uh, we're gonna be slightly low here with this ammo, but we're gonna aim dead center regardless. here today we're also going to be shooting this guy no I think that's right at the neck yeah all right let's aim for the small one yep There it is. There we go. Okay, cool. So dead on 300. All right, let's go to uh, 400. Uh, primary arms. Watch me knock the camera off. Climbing up. How's it going? All right, let's do it. All right, we're getting a stronger wind now. I'd say this is five miles an hour, left to right. I think basically uh, perpendicular, which makes sense for this area. So we're going to use the left, we're going to bracket with the five mile and zero mark and uh, oh no, that's picking up. We'll use the five mile an hour. Hit. I whiffed that. I was, I had too big of a wobble zone and I got impatient. I should have uh, narrowed that down. Hit. 
Yeah. All right, we're gonna aim at the small three and a halfer. Glasses off. Nice. Miss. I think the wind is actually picking up. We're gonna bracket between the 10 mile an hour and the five. All right, good enough. So we're basically dead on at 400. Hopefully that's good. Oh, I forgot the... Yeah, we're gonna run it this time. One. Is that a myth? It looked like it hit, but it didn't make the ping noise. Like I heard, I saw like the spatter at the bay. I think I probably like hit, um, what is it called? Uh, one of the surfaces, like the bolt, like the little bolt thing, and it just deletes the bullet instead of making a ping. Let's go again. Yeah, that's probably what it was. All right, we're gonna go for the small one now to see if we're high or low, like where exactly we're at. Uh, slightly high, and all right, we're gonna aim slightly, just a hair low. is okay so remember i'm not like it's not a high hold or a low hold per se because the target the target i'm shooting at for the confirmation is about this big right so i aimed dead over and i just saw it whiz right past the uh the stem of the thing and then i just put the thing at the bottom the aiming point at the bottom at the six o'clock wasn't even a full six o'clock and that was enough to hit the hit the uh the plate so and in real life conditions, I would just aim dead center. Uh, 400, four, 400. Uh, but if I wanted a little bit more position, I know slightly low at 400. And that's historically actually what I've noticed. I've adjusted my zero a little bit. Uh, previously, I was a, a slightly different zero. And that was a hard hold uh, low at 400. So on the full size target or the reduced IPSC, I aimed, you know, at the sub belt line, which isn't the target. And that would hit near the top. But with this adjusted zero, it looks like I'm only about uh, a couple inches low at a uh, 400. Okay, now we go to, we go five, 500? 500, 500, let's do it. And my flashlight turned on. While we're here, get some water from this sick pouch. I'll do a video of it pretty soon here. Is this like a commercial thing? Like, fucking Christ. Hey look, it's the brass from the last time we were shooting out here a couple days ago. Yeah, we are at 512. Can we, can we, there we go. Look at that. You can see how wrecked my rep magnifier is. You can only see the middle bits. The left and right of the display are completely wiped out. Just dawned on me that I'm filming in portrait. Um, here we go. You can go ahead and unsubscribe now. I am clearly a subhuman for filming in portrait. <clears throat> Let's get to it. Using both hemispheres of my brain this time, 
I'm gonna put both rifles up top so I don't have to come back down for the other. My God, we're learning. Keep forgetting this, yeah. All right, we're gonna start with this guy. It's interesting, shooting this off of a bag, I almost prefer only using the mag pod and stabilizing my hand under the bag like this because it's actually really easy to not pay attention and press on the uh, front sight block. Some more downsides regarding uh, usage of S FSBs. But my Sobel, bro, but my Sobel. All right, 500, so we should basically, or 512. So we should basically just aim dead nuts on. Uh, once again, uh, I don't remember what this actually ends up. I think it's actually a bit short. Uh, but we're just going to go 500 and hope it all turns out. And uh, we'll go from there. Oh, we're so angled. Like, my entire right leg is off of the thing. But let's do it. Hit! First round, baby! 500, dead on! That was a miss, slightly right. That could have been me, honestly. I like doing little resets to kind of make each shot a new shot, uh, like I was talking about before. That was a hit. I think I pulled that, I'm not sure. This is where these irons are useful. You can line up on target before scoping in. And it's useful to get a natural point of aim. Hit. What is that? Ah, oh, my eyes. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I don't know how many hits that was, but you can hear him on camera, I think. I think all of them except that one I pulled up was a hit. One of those was questionable because I didn't really hear the ping, but I saw the impact uh, splatter. But that can also sometimes mean um, I hit, I hit a rock and it made the splatter, so. Uh, same for the small one. Yeah, buddy. That one's really loud because it can move. That was high left. That's on me. Cool. Yeah, that was actually really on. I'm putting the cross at the bottom of the swinger. Um, once again, Practically speaking, I'm just gonna put the five on the target, but it's just a nice little bit of knowledge. So both five, uh, 400 and 500, I wanna aim just a hair low if I'm going for a low percentage long range shot with my 11.5. Probably never gonna happen, but it's good to know, and it's good to know the capability of your weapon systems. I'm talking in such a manner that makes me sound exactly like T-Rex arms. <laughs> 